Okay, so we have a definition of the Frechet distance now, but the question remains, how do we compute it? And this may get to be a little bit tricky because we're taking the minimum over functions. And not just any functions, continuous functions from some real interval to another real interval. So how would we even do that? We'll take two approaches here, and both of them are kind of good tricks to know. The first one is, if something is too complicated to understand, let's just make it simpler. So let's actually not talk about polylines, let's talk about line segments, and this will simplify our lives a lot. And now there is somebody coming in a car, so let's wait for a second. And the other thing is, sometimes it's hard to optimize something, but it's easier to decide if the optimum is at least a certain value or at most a certain value. So that's what we'll do here. We'll pick some epsilon and then we'll make an algorithm to decide is the Frechet distance between these two polylines at most epsilon. So this is now the simplified problem that we will actually look at. Given two line segments, single line segments, is there a Frechet distance at most epsilon? And in order to do that, we'll look at a thing called the free space diagram, or parameter space. And so parameter space is the following. I have these two functions, alpha and beta, and they give me the progress along the curve. And now that's just progress along the line segment. Now in this parameter space, I take as my two axes how far along am I along each of the polylines. So my parameter space is a unit square. And for any point in this unit square, I'm really talking about two points on these line segments. And these two actual points have an actual distance. So now in parameter space, I can talk about distances. So any point in this unit square is two points on these line segments, which gives me a Euclidean distance. And I already mentioned the other simplification that we'll take, which is to say that we just decide is it at most epsilon or not. So now for any point in parameter space, I can say, this is okay, these points are close enough, these two points do not contradict that the Frechet distance is at most epsilon. And for other points, if this epsilon is violated, then I cannot have the man at this point and the dog at this point, because then I would have Frechet distance more than epsilon. So now basically, I have in this unit square parameter space, points that I'm allowed to be at and points that I'm not allowed to be at. And now my question to you is how does this parameter space tell me if the Frechet distance is at most epsilon or not? Think about it. Okay, I've moved to a new spot. Hopefully you've used this time to answer my question. We begin at the start of each line segment. So certainly the point zero, zero needs to be in the free space, needs to be allowed. Otherwise, the man and the dog can't even start and we've lost immediately. Similarly, the point one, one must be in the free space. And now the observation is both the man and the dog, so both on the x-axis and the y-axis, we need to walk continuously, monotonically non-decreasing, from zero to one. So what we're looking for is a path that goes somehow from the bottom left corner to the top right corner through free space. Because if we ever go to a point that's not in the free space, then we don't have Frechet distance at most epsilon. This free space is actually quite structured and it's contained within this unit square. In the exercise sheet, we'll ask you to give us the actual shape of this thing. So there are a couple observations we can make. First of all, within this unit square, the free space is convex. And you can think about this. So what does it mean? I have one point in the free space, I have another point in the free space, and then I have this linear interpolation between these two points in parameter space. Both of these two points are free. What happens if I move between them? I linearly interpolate the point on the one line segment. I linearly interpolate the point on the other line segment. What happens to the distance? And here you can observe that the maximum over this interpolation must occur at one of the endpoints. So if I have two points in parameter space, any linear combination of them has at most the same distance. So the free space itself is convex and this is very useful for us because then if we know that one point is free and another point is free, then I can just go there. And this is also good for our reparameterizations because just going there in a straight line in parameter space means that both the man and the dog just walk with constant speed in one direction. So as long as they both go forward, that is good. But this is only true for line segment versus line segment, which is why we looked at this case first. Because if you think about it, a polyline is just a lot of line segments. So if I would look at the free space diagram, at the parameter space for 
an entire polyline versus an entire polyline, basically what I get is little squares of line segment versus line segment free space. So I can make my larger free space for entire polylines out of little blocks of line segment, line segment parameter space. And the interesting thing happens between adjacent squares, because if I know that I can be here on the boundary on one square and here on the other boundary of the square, and both of those points are free, then I can just go there in a straight line in parameter space, and it has to be free because within one of these cells is what they're called. Within one of these cells, the free space is convex. So now, finally, let's talk about polylines. There are two of them on the left and on the right we see the parameter space, where now the cells aren't square. I've scaled them to correspond to the length of the corresponding line segment. So if you look at this cell over here, for example, then on the one axis it corresponds to this red line segment, on the other axis it corresponds to this blue line segment, and anywhere in this cell is just points on these two line segments. And in this way, the entire parameter space is just these pairs of points on these two polylines. Now, let's play around with this. Let's pick some values of epsilon and see what this does to the free space diagram. So if I pick a fairly small epsilon, then what we can see, we have to start in the bottom left corner. And then for a while, this works out. We are in free space, indicated in white, and these points can stay together. But we cannot make it past this point. At some point, either the red point has to go away or the blue point has to go away. And so these two polylines have Fréchet distance larger than this epsilon indicated by the red circle because I cannot get all the way to the end. There are these two other holes, let's say, in the free space diagram. In the middle, I can get the two points to be close to each other again. But I cannot get there. If I have to start with both of them in the origin, they have to go far away from each other before they can get this close again. And part of the problem there is this corner over here, the blue polyline goes away. So let's make epsilon large enough so that that works. And now we see a bunch of things happened in parameter space. So now epsilon is large enough to make blue go to this corner and then come around and then it's pretty easy, they can go together again for a bit, and now red makes this loop and needs to go away again, and now I am stuck. I cannot get to the top right corner. And the problem seems to be that blue went far ahead, so we went too high up in the parameter space. So maybe we can do this differently and instead go together for a while, go through this tiny gap in parameter space, and now I'm going to stay low which means that the blue point isn't going to progress very far. And then I do the entire loop with the red polyline, and now it can go there. But now I still have a problem. I still can't get to the end. And I mean, in parameter space, I can clearly see that the white area is not connected, so I'm not going to get to the top right corner, but I'm trying to get an intuition for what this means for the two polylines. I have to find a path from the bottom left corner to the top right corner, going in both directions monotonically and continuously. And it's just not connected yet, so epsilon needs to be larger still. And for example, this part is going to be important. Let's keep increasing epsilon and keep increasing epsilon until we get the connection. Oh, there it is. So right about here, the connection. So now this is a way to do the Fréché distance with this leash. So first they go up, then they stay together a bit, and now I have to be careful that blue doesn't walk too far along because then I'm stuck. So I was here, now I stay low, make red do the loop like I wanted to do before, and then now they can very carefully walk these two parallel lines, and now we're good again and we can get to the end. So for this value of epsilon indicated by the green circle, we can see in the free space diagram 
that this is a yes instance. There, there is a monotone path in both directions that gets me from the bottom left corner to the top right corner. And this is a little bit tricky because this can get super tiny thin. So this epsilon, if I could use my mouse a little bit more precisely, I could go precisely through here. There's also this free space down here at the bottom, but that really doesn't mean anything for our Fourier distance because this is not connected to anything that matters. But this is a point where I can get close on both of these polylines, but it just doesn't go anywhere. So now, using this concept of parameter space and free space, I think we understand the Fourier distance a lot better. But still, this parameter space is a continuous thing. So how do we actually calculate whether this path exists or not?